Hello and welcome ladies and gentlemen to the Status Report highlight for the 26th of September, 2017. And oh boy is it a juicy one, with Eugen and Peter reflecting upon the new features and content presented at Gamescom, and finally, sharing the full 0.63 devlog video with Gamescom demo gameplay in full HD. A link to the devlog will be in the description below, but let's get straight in to this week's Status Report with lead producer Eugen. The last two weeks had us focused on different issues in the base and core features of DayZ. As previously mentioned, these are tackled through smaller scrum teams that are dedicated to these topics. Currently, we are running a ranged combat team with focus on weapons and another focused on melee combat. More are expected to be set up from vehicles to central economy or the infected. These should enable much faster iteration that can deliver on their goals as the technology requires less changes under the hood. This means that we are no longer tied to larger technology changes and can focus on the stuff that's important to us and players alike, things that tackle immediate concerns that have troubled the game for a very long time. The approach we chose is based around priorities that carry through to other features, so we spend less time going back and redoing stuff over and over. Current priorities started with the base movement of the character, which defines a lot of the work that is going to happen in both melee and ranged combat. Once we nail down the details, we can quickly implement and iterate things, like player speed changing with rotation or rotation limits in order to cut on the erratic movement that is usually described as zigzagging. There are tons of things like these that the community cares deeply about. We take this feedback very seriously. A lot of these things have driven community interaction over these years. Bugs that we didn't fix, features that didn't have consistency or detail or were missing entirely. There is a reason behind everything. We spend a lot of time on figuring these out and once we are happy with our solutions, we are going to get the discussion going. The process, however, requires you to test them in-game, and that is where we go from prototype to full-fledged feature. The thing is, you try and go for functionality first before the visuals get polished. It usually does not matter if it looks good if you're developing the game, but it's also the reason we don't show many of these things that are in their early implementation because they are just functional enough for us to iterate, but not polished enough to present ourselves with. That brings me to the next important thing. Imagine all these great things created with placeholders or skeletons of functionality that we look into and keep iterating on. Ideas are just ideas and they usually change for the better as development moves forwards. What seems fun and good on paper, though sometimes does not translate well in game. If the technology used is layered enough to let designers test their ideas, we know we can differentiate the bad from the good. I don't believe that we always come up with the best solutions on the first iteration, and so that's why we listen to your feedback. And Eugen finishes up with, Even when I look at our 0.63 devlog, I know and see tons of issues that just irritate me. But I'm not alone and this team is the best I've had a chance to work with, and I have no doubt we can solve the issues. Beta cannot come soon enough. That said, we would like to focus on covering these hot topics and how we solve them in the current iteration, because we bleed passion for what Daisy should be. Now let's see what lead designer Peter has to say. After the demo showcase at Gamescom, many of you expressed concerns about missing zoom with the naked eye, as well as toggling to aim down sights. First of all, I want to underline that absence of the naked eye zoom was intentional, as we run into technical problems due to interference with switching to iron sights, which was keybinded to the middle mouse button. Time was running out, and instead of fixing the old camera behavior, we decided to cut it completely so that we can start implementing a new camera from scratch to allow us to have more control over it, which is being worked on right now. Anyway, now that dynamic zoom is currently missing, we can start asking questions. Is it really needed? How does it contribute to gameplay? What are the pros and cons? Eye zoom is kind of a long-term trademark of Bohemia Interactive Games, the same way as the free look being independent on the character movement simulation of mid to long range engagement wouldn't be possible without such a feature, as fluid, on demand changing of field of view from wide to correct perspective is needed there, typically for observing your surroundings and during gunfights. Without it, characters are just a small group of pixels in the distance, and probably no one enjoys pixel hunting. On the other hand, we know that in this case we gave the player character some supernatural abilities. We would lower the importance of items which should be used in such situations, like binoculars or scopes, which can be used even while not mounted on a weapon. Currently, these have very limited use among players, as naked eye zoom, or focus if you want to call it that, is enough for them to observe the environment. Also, there is a bit of a problem with the continuous switching of object LODs and textures, which puts additional pressure on the CPU-GPU. While this would still be the case with binos and scopes as well, these changes to field of view are instant and not continuous, 
Missing eye zoom will lead to bringing players' engagement to much closer distances, and that's the most important thing in DayZ – player interactions. A final decision hasn't been made yet. Personally, I'm inclined to keeping this feature in the game. But even in the worst case scenario, aiming down sights will maintain correct perspective, with a bit of added zoom while holding breath to simulate focus, to avoid aforementioned pixel hunting during gunfights. I mentioned aiming down sights and we are aware that current keybinds middle mouse button click while raised is far from ideal, as it feels clunky, exactly the opposite to real life, where aiming down sights is as simple as just moving your head and aligning the eye with the sight. What is really important to me is the fact that there shouldn't be any toggle into the aimed stance, raise nor iron sights or scopes, which means characters should go ideally to an idle pose when all controls are released. Toggleable aggressive stance can unintentionally fiddle with characters' body language, which disrupts gameplay and the experience players have during their interactions. Currently, we are experimenting with different approaches of switching to iron sights while raised. Key bind on keyboard can work, but I'm not a fan of it and it destroys the basic firearm controls between mouse and keyboard. On standard mouse, there is only two buttons which come as possible candidates to use, middle mouse button and the right mouse button. Scrolling up with the mouse wheel to aim down sights is much better than precisely clicking the wheel. Also, it means for the switching between iron sights and scope in case the given firearm allows it. Think AKs and other guns from the Eastern Bloc or additional sights mounted on RIS from the side of the weapon and for cycling through scope zoom levels, for example the hunting scope. Personally, Peach prefers a simple double click and holding the right mouse button, basically a double click, without releasing the button after the second click of the button, as a shortcut to switch directly from lowered arms to iron sights. To switch back from aiming down sights, just release the right button, click and hold it again, same for toggling from raised to ADS. These two methods are far better and we will most likely keep both. And for my opinion on this, now I've played the 0.63 demo thanks to Martin and Beatty for bringing it along to EGX 2017, I would have to say maybe try the simple one click of the right mouse button to ADS, the same to go out of ADS and hold right mouse button to raise hands or raise weapon normally. Not sure where I'm getting this idea from but I'm sure you'll remind me in the comments below. We've recently implemented turns to the movement itself, until now in 0.63 turns was only in idle, which is a game changer. It simply prevents zigzagging by limiting character rotation speed and adding rotation radius to turns while the player is moving. It's scaled with character speed. The faster the movement, the bigger the radius is. There are still some issues that we know need to be ironed out. In reality, nobody can see their back while doing 180 degree turns, and there is a bunch of missing features which will make it better and more visually pleasing, like tilting the character while making turns. This solution differs from the full-fledged inertia system, which can lead to players feeling like they are driving a tank with all that acceleration, deceleration and stopping after sharp turns. We want to thoroughly test it now, to feel how it plays and if it's capable enough to achieve our goal of having smooth navigation through environment, as we definitely would like to maintain the hardly earned responsiveness and smoothness of the new character. Next up we have brand and PR manager Martin, who I met alongside Beatty at EGX 2017, both amazing super awesome peoples and I look forward to meeting them again. But anyway, here's what Martin has to say. Survivors, after a vicious editing battle that took way longer than we all had planned, we were finally able to deliver the 0.63 devlog today. It's taking a quick look at the key things that we presented at Gamescom last month. Let me just quickly give credits to Beatty and our QA engineer Dan Fialka for their tireless work on the actual gameplay capture. As I have said in previous status reports, it's not always an easy work tinkering with the internal build. I hope you all appreciate the early look at 0.63, at least in this format. It's certainly not the same as experiencing the new animation system and player controller firsthand, but it's the best we can do now. Suffice to say, this devlog was a good learning experience and it made us rethink the way we produce video content for DayZ. Going forward, we want to streamline the creative process behind making development videos and hopefully find a good, effective workflow for gameplay capture in 0.63. Last week me and Beatty also visited EGX in Birmingham and boy did we meet a lot of awesome people. Originally our visit was really planned as a last minute trip as we just wanted to meet a couple of Daisy content creators at EGX. There was no booth involved like at Gamescom and we only packed a bunch of Daisy lanyards just in case. Somehow we ended up with meeting some 30 fellow survivors at once, occupying half of the EGX business lounge and demoing 0.63 to everybody. Thanks to Matthew and the rest of the EGX organizers for not kicking us out. Blue and Queenie, Minder, Septic Falcon, that's me, 
and Joanna, all had their mods and friends there, were also finally met the Twitter super spammer Spaggy and his friend Essex Rocker. I know that guy. Well, I would like to name everybody we met, but it would make for a really long list. Thanks everybody for coming and chatting with us, and thanks Beatty for talking me into the trip. You all make the best, most dedicated community out there. Ah, he's such a nice guy. Martin then finishes off by saying we'll definitely be back to EGX next year, hopefully with a more official presence and a proper booth. Oh yeah, get planning now boys and girls, and I'll see you then. And that's all for this week's Status Report highlight for the 26th of September, 2017. Keep your eyes peeled on the channel though, I will be putting up another DayZ video at some point this week with my impressions of the 0.63 demo. As always, I recommend you read the status reports in full yourselves for the most amount of information that they hold. Remember to leave a like as it does help the channel out a lot. Subscribe if you're feeling frisky, and I'll see you peeps next time.